follow me, I know the way. Those words were spoken by Wells Crowther on September 11, 2001. Those words represented the first step in embarking on a courageous endeavor. Those words ultimately led Wells to create for himself a national legacy. When I heard those words, I was gripped in my heart. I said to myself in quick succession three things. What an amazing story. Everyone needs to hear this story. I want to share this story with everyone. What struck me was the amazing courage that Wells displayed that day, the unique manner by which his heroics became known, all tied to an ordinary single object, and also the physical athletic acts that he performs. But courage is more than just a physical act or acts. Courage starts with commitment. Follow me, I know the way. Wells committed to saving others that day. My journey also started with a verbal commitment. I turned to my wife, I'm making a movie. I didn't stop there. I told my kids. I told my friends, I told coworkers and total strangers. Now my verbal commitment was made under much more favorable conditions to Wells. But it was still difficult and weighty. You see, I never made a film before. I never took a class in filmmaking. I never read a book on filmmaking. But six years later, Man in Red Bandana, a documentary about Wells Crowther, full-length film, was completed. It's a clear example of passion over experience. Wells committed much more. Wells worked as an equities trader on the 104th floor of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. He was there that day when United Airlines Flight 175 struck his building. He called, and he calmly left a voicemail for his mom. Mom, this is Wells. I just want you to know that I'm OK. That was the last time the crowd has heard Wells' voice. Allison never, ever gave up looking for her son. She read magazines. She read newspaper articles, watched news accounts. Six months following the 9-11 disaster, they found Wells' body. He was in the lobby. In May of 2002, eight months later, when the New York Times did a lengthy article about the survivors and how they got out. Tower by tower, floor by floor, minute by minute description of what it was like to be in those towers and what it was like to escape from those towers. And Allison read about two women who said that they were saved, Judy Ween and Ling Young. They both said they were saved by a man with a red bandana. As soon as Allison read that, she knew that they were talking about her son. You see, Wells always carried a red bandana. From the age of eight, it was a habit he got into. Like any admiring son, he wanted to be like his father. Jeff always carried a blue bandana. And he said to his dad, can I have a bandana like you? And they gave him a red one because mom needed to know whose was whose in the wash. And from that day forward, Wells always had that red bandana. He wore it under his helmet when he played lacrosse and hockey. He had it in his pocket to clean up spills. And he had it that day 
in the World Trade Center. You see, when you publicly commit, when you say to your friends and family what you're going to do, something courageous, something difficult, you increase dramatically the chance that you'll actually do it. And that's why I told everyone what I was about to do. But you need more than commitment to be courageous. That's just the first step. Courage also involves risk, fear. If it didn't involve risk or fear, courage would be commonplace. For me, I risked at least three things. I had to get it right for the Crowthers. I took on this weighty responsibility, and they've been through so much horror. They've cried so much every day for their son. I couldn't take on this responsibility and not get it right. By committing to make this film, I risked something occurring that I desperately sought to avoid, which was disappointing the Crowthers. I risked my reputation. Because as you now know, I told a lot of people of my plans. And of course, there's a financial risk in making a film. I funded it myself. You see, documentaries generally don't make money, and if you're lucky, you break even. So I knew going into this that I likely was going to be losing money in making this movie. This was about preserving and sharing an amazing story. You see, I feel in this world there's not enough giving, there's not enough selflessness and caring, and Wells was such a selfless, extraordinary individual. I hoped by making this film and sharing it, it would encourage, incentivize others to likewise be courageous and selfless. Wells risked much, much more than I did. He risked and ultimately gave his life that day. After Allison and Jeff read this New York Times article. They had the two uh, women who identified Wells through his red bandana, Ling Young and Judy Wing, over to their home for a barbecue. And through their accounts and the New York Times article, they were able to piece together the last hour of their son's life, his finest hour. They learned that Wells was on the 104th floor of his office when the plane hit, and that he came down to 78, the Sky Lobby, where there was a great concentration of people. At the Sky Lobby was an express elevator that would take people to the ground floor. And unfortunately, that's pretty much where the plane hit. So he came down to this location. It was smoky. It was dusty. There were fires. It was hot. There were lifeless bodies. People in agony, people were trapped. And among those hellish conditions, as Jeff likes to say, Wells went to work. He found a fire extinguisher, he put out fires. He extricated people that were trapped. He guided people, at least four or five, to a only working staircase, the only one that was functional and hadn't been damaged from the plane. Along the way, he guided them down from 78 to 61, and he carried a woman who was injured on his shoulder. Once he knew they were safe, he went back up again a second time. When he got to the 78th floor, he got another group down, and he led them down a few flights of stairs. And once he got to clean air, and they were safe, he went back up a third time. He found a few more survivors, and he got them out as well. Ultimately, they found Wells' body in the lobby within feet of safety. If he had gotten out, he would have escaped from the highest floor of any survivor. But sadly, he was in the lobby when the building collapsed. Wells must have known the risks. It's hard to comprehend, but he pushed on. So 
So courage, commitment, and risk. But there's one more element, effort. For me, the effort to make the film was easy. I had such passion to share this story. And I can tell you, I'm as passionate now about sharing with you this story as I was when I first heard it many years ago. I was just blown away about obviously what Wells did, but that this bandana, a piece of fabric, could allow the Crowthers who've been through so much harm and pain to, to ease it in some manageable way, slightly. That a piece of fabric could change their perspective on their loss. So that pa passion translated into me leaving no stone unturned. I had to get it right for the Crowthers. They entrusted me, a traffic lawyer with no experience, to tell the story of their sterling, extraordinary son. I couldn't cut corners. That meant spending hundreds of hours researching, finding new information, new footage, new videos, anything that would advance the story, tell it better than it's ever been told before. Why make a film that simply rehashes what other people have already said? This translated into me spending hundreds of hours writing and rewriting my script. I could tell you, I spent more time on that document than any other document I've ever written before. And I did tell you I was a lawyer. <laughs> that passion allowed me to spend six or more hours in a tiny editing studio and be super excited when I left knowing that we got a really good 30-second segment. I was 30 seconds closer to completing this project. It was just one of the greatest privileges that I've had to be able to tell this story. And I just feel so grateful that the crowd has allowed me to do so. Wells, likewise, as you've already heard, provided tremendous effort. But for me, what was really significant was not winning an award at an international film festival for my film, but rather seeing Jeff and Allison after they saw the film for the very first time. Now that was significant. Wells was in the lobby. He could have gotten out. But what you may not know, he wasn't trying to get out when the building came down. He had something else in mind. You see, his body was found with a group of firefighters. The lieutenant in charge of those five firefighters had just called in that they were going up to 78 with the jaws of life to help victims. Wells was with those group of five firefighters because he was going up again. Clearly, Wells gave his maximum effort. Wells is remembered in a variety of ways. Every year, there's a red bandana football game. All the participants wear red bandanas. There's an eagle mascot that the student body voted and named Wells. There's a 9-11 memorial just a few feet from here where Wells and all the other 9-11 victims that graduated from Boston College are named. And outside the Boston Marathon, one of the largest runs in the New England area every fall is the Red Bandana Run. Over 1,000 runners participate, remembering Wells and his legacy. Wells is also remembered by total strangers unconnected to him. There are artists who have made art in his honor and his red bandana. There are musicians who've written songs in his honor. 
throughout the country, there are babies named Wells, boys and girls. And those parents wanted their kids to be named Wells so that when they grow up, they could share what Wells did and hope their son or daughter will personify the amazing values that Wells displayed on that day. Courage is not restricted to life-saving activities. It's not limited to doing six-year film projects. There are an infinite number of ways that we can be courageous. When Wells did what he did, he could not have known that he was going to become a national hero. When I started this film project, I could not have known that it would be a transformational journey for me. You see, Wells actually saved, at least metaphorically, an 11th person, myself. I learned from Wells that I'm not just a traffic lawyer, that I can make a movie. I learned the importance of being involved with something that was bigger than me, that might even outlive me. Because of Wells, I'm a better person. I think of him every day. So I ask you to think of these questions. What are you passionate about? What could motivate you to commit, take a risk, and give your best effort? And most importantly, what could, words could you say today which will start that process? Thank you very much.